a Dajjal will not be there particularly destroying your homes physically or harming you physically. Although his army would do that, but that's not his, that's not how he gains victory. The way he's victorious in those 40 days that he stays on earth, according to the hadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu many hadiths, is through fitan like trials, fitan that play with your mind, play with your psychology. They play with your psyche. You know, they make you see things that are not there. And they really play with you and with poverty. Because what he has the power to stop the rain and stop the earth from growing for you and so on. So you fall into poverty and it becomes a very difficult life for you. It's called a fitna. Either you follow him and live, you know, look after your family and live properly, or you give up and give up your deen, or you hold on to your deen and you struggle through those 40 days. For Rasul Sallallahu and all the prophets who warned about the Dajjal, they told us how to protect ourselves from him. So number one, the Prophet Sallallahu advised us to hold very strongly on our deen Islam. Yeah, and you make Islam the most important thing for you in your life. It's more important that you put it in priority to everything else in your life. Everything revolves around it. You take pride in it. In your looks, in your words, where you are, in your environment, the types of friends you choose, the food you eat, the, the clothes you wear. You hold on to it tightly. You hold on to your sunnas tightly. The, the voluntary things they don't even have to do. You hold on to them. Because these things will make you strong, insha'Allah, when the Dajjal comes out, if it is in our time. To know very well the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very important, brothers and sisters, that we know Asma'ullah al-Husna very, very well. There are 99 names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which He has taught us through the Qur'an, all of them in the Qur'an, and through His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We must know them well, what their meanings are, what they represent and apply them according to his names and attributes. But if you don't understand them by the time Dajjal comes, or even in our time now, the prerequisites of the Dajjal, it's very easy for you to lose your aqidah, very easy for you to lose uh, your belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll start doing many shirk. We already have in our time, Muslims who are practicing, the, you know, opposing the names and attributes of Allah, and they don't even know it. I'll give you an example. Some people hang up a shoe in their house or knocking on wood when, 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 when uh, something beautiful is in front of them or you praise someone and they knock on wood so you don't envy them or something. All right. So these are practices which oppose the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're believing that by knocking on wood, it prevents harm. So you, you put your trust in something which, which in a power which Allah has only in a piece of wood. You're making wood have godly powers. Or um, this eye which people make with their hands. You wear it believing that it prevents harm. That's the same as idolatry. In a time of the Prophet ﷺ, they used to carry their idols around with them to prevent harm from them. There's also pessimism, tiara. You know, if something happens, it means this. You know, um, what do you call it? Seances, if you've ever heard of them, or palm reading, or star signs, astrology. These things, Muslims practice them today and they don't even know it. And because they don't know the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very well. Now imagine when a Dajjal comes and he deceives you with all these other things. You're going to believe in him that he's the God himself. Because the Christians and the Jews among the first of the people of the book are the ones who opposed the correct teachings of the Asma or Sifat, the names and attributes of Allah. And that's why they'll be the first to follow the Dajjal. They don't know what they are. And that's why a large number of Muslims will also follow the Dajjal. Because of their lack of knowledge about Allah's names and attributes. Learn them, my dear brothers and sisters. Learn them well. They are not just names. They have meanings and there is a reason why Allah told us them. Almost after every single ayah in the Quran, almost, Allah mentions a name or two of His. وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْوَدُوَ وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودُ Huh? Allah constantly mentions these names to us to let us know what He is, who He is. When you learn them, you will know what Allah's attributes are and then you will compare them to the Dajjal's attributes and you will know that the Dajjal is not Allah because Allah says, for example, that He is self-sufficient. He doesn't eat or drink. He doesn't need things. A Dajjal eats and drinks. So you'll know that He is not God. Allah al Hayy al Qayyum, He lives forever, nothing can kill Him. When you see Dajjal gets killed, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a Dajjal. Or He feels pain. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees. A Dajjal is a'war. He sees with one eye. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Laysa bi a'war. Our Lord does not see with one eye and He's not one eyed like the Dajjal. So you know that a Dajjal comes with this one eye and Allah is not like that. He's not like that. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Laysa ka mithlihi shay wa huwa sami'u al alim. There is nothing like Him and He hears and knows everything. In our life now, in your prayers, especially after al ibrahimiyyah when you're praying four rak'ah prayers or three rak'ah or two rak'ah and you pray and at the end you recite al ibrahimiyyah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to always or most often seek refuge in allah from the fitna of the dajjal in bukhari and muslim for example the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam aisha says that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say the following words in his prayer, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab al-qabr wa a'udhu bika min fitna al-masih al-dajjal wa a'udhu bika min fitna al-mahya wa fitna al-mamad. So he used to say, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the torment, torture, punishment of the grave and from the fitna, the trial of the Antichrist Dajjal and from the trials of the day and the night. Another way to protect yourself is to memorize the first 10 ayat of Surah Al-Kahf or the last 10 ayat of Surah Al-Kahf. This is in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where in Sahih Muslim, for example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, مَنْ أَدْرَكَهُ مِنْكُمْ meaning the Dajjal, whoever the Dajjal comes in their time. فَلْيَقْرَ عَلَيْهِ فَوَاتِحَ Surah Al-Kahf Then let them recite the openings of Surah Al-Kahf. If the Dajjal comes in your time, he also said, "Man hafiza ashra ayat min awwal surat al kahf ghusma min al Dajjal." Whoever memorizes the first ten verses of Surat al Kahf, he or she will be protected from the Dajjal, meaning from his trial. Meaning you won't fall prey, you won't follow him, you won't follow him, you won't believe in him, you'll disbelieve in him. And that's because not only memorizing them, but you should understand their meaning. The meanings in, in, in the 10 ayat of the first of Kaf or the last one, have you know, they're just, they're, they've got so much wisdom in them. I want you to read it and analyze the meanings that are in there. Uh, so these are some of the ways that you can protect yourself from the Dajjal. And lastly, run away from the Dajjal. Go to the places like Mecca and Medina, because you will not be able to enter them.